let's broaden this out just a little bit because Huntington's is a rare disease, but there are lots of rare diseases out there. So how would you define a rare disease? Anybody want to take a whack at that? Is there a definition? I will. Um, so a rare disease in the United States is defined as a disease that affects less than 200,000 people. Um, and the definition of a rare disease changes by country, given that population. But um, you see diseases that affect um, many people, even within the definition of rare. But there are also diseases that affect you know, less than 40 people around the, the world. So um, as technology advances, we're seeing more and more rare diseases um, identified every year. Um, and so that number, 7,000, we just see it growing. We had to pick. There it is. Uh, there was an attempt to address all this with Congress, right? And in fact, they passed something called the Orphan Drug Act, and that's been around for quite a while. What is it? When does it kick in? And what does it mean? Does anybody know? So the, the Orphan Drug Act um, is an act that passed in 1983 to incentivize pharmaceutical companies to develop and manufacture um, drugs to uh, treat orphan diseases. Um, prior to that act, many uh, pharmaceutical companies didn't see the benefit of creating drugs to treat orphan diseases because um, there was more of an incentive to um, create drugs that treated common diseases so that they would be guaranteed a return on their money. If a drug, if we really want people to benefit, even though their disease is not, an, I'll use a phrase, economically viable to a drug company, maybe we protect their pricing, we protect their ability, and as I understand it, it also provides a monopoly to a drug company that adopts this orphan, this orphan drug. Um, does that work? They're awarded exclusivity, mar uh, marketing exclusivity for a certain period of okay, time. Okay, so it, yes. they, monopoly, exclusivity, a more polite term. But I, I don't mean that to be impolite. It, if somebody wants to bring an expensive drug in to benefit very few people, they should get some advantages, don't you think? Uh, yeah, yes, there's a, a lot of risk and a lot of money that these companies put out to develop um, these drugs, to research, to put the clinical trials in place. Um, and so the, the reward is to be able to, um, you know, get incentives, including right. marketing exclusivity. Now, the potential, the potential backfire is if a drug is protected by the Orphan Drug Act and suddenly it's useful in a different uh, disease, and that disease is not an orphan disease at all, not a rare disease. Um, AZT comes to mind in the beginning of the AIDS epidemic, where I believe AZT was an orphan drug, but it suddenly was available for millions of people. Um, is there anything in the act that allows you to modify and say, look, you know, it's no longer an orphan drug? Well, I think that's part of the challenge is that um, the way a drug comes to market for a very small number of individuals and then it seeks additional indications, often the price tag that it came to market with because it was orphan uh, is what gets um, what used then for uh, more highly prevalent conditions, right? Which right. makes the drug even more unaffordable. Right, that's a problem. That is and a that problem. And that wasn't a addressed early on in that legislation, but at some point, we probably should take another look at that. Certainly from your perspective, it makes things more expensive necessarily than they have to be, right? It also forces us to do, if you will, more to the drug in terms of uh, prior authorization by indication. So each indication may be has its own set of um, step therapy, if you will, mm -hmm. especially if there are other options. In orphan conditions, there are often no other options, but as the indications expand, and now you're in a disease state that maybe has generic options or two other agents, right. forces us to manage that drug by indication much more closely.